Hey YouTube, what's up? Scarecrow here. I'm here today to uh, finally get around to doing my uh, standard format Gold Paladin build for you. So, uh, as I'm sure at this point comes to no surprise to most people, Gold Paladin are not very good in uh, standard. They're a pretty decent deck in uh, premium, but in gold in uh, standard, they're not very good right now. Um, so. Let's get into the profile. Uh, this build is going to be kind of different from what I'm sure you're going to used to seeing. Um, and there's a something to comment on that first to start out. This build will be different. A lot of people tend to react to different as it's just bad because it's not going with the majority. Now, open your mind for a second if you're probably starting to think that from the beginning. And think this in consideration. If the deck already isn't very good, different can only lead to either good or it just stays bad. So keep that in mind. If nothing else, you can only just be, continue to be bad or you can get good. So be open-minded about this. Um, it's not like terribly weird, but just keep that open mind. All right, so... Uh, starting Vanguard, we have the same as every other deck. Um, then for our triggers, uh, we have six fronts, uh, four of our perfect guards, and two more draws. And then last, we have four heals. So I went with a split of six front, six draw. Um, so start off, I'm going to talk about the draws. Uh, anyone who's played this deck knows this deck does not do well with card advantage. Um, this deck is pretty bad about managing its resources well. Um, so, plus, like, with the way the deck plays, even if you are trying to play conservative-like, you're going to find that you're just not going to have, like, many resources anyway. What that comes down to eventually is you realize... If you're going to play this deck, you're just going to have to play this deck balls to the walls. Just throw out what you have and not be concerned about what your opponent's really going to do to you for the most part. You're just going to have to try to kill them and hope you can survive them. Because <laughs> that's really the only shot this deck has is to... Take advantage of the little strengths it has, which is being aggressive early on, and just be aggressive, throw your stuff out there, keep getting aggressive. Um, if you don't understand what I'm saying about this, you're going to find uh, that a lot of times in this deck, you're just going to be doing things like, you know what, I'm not going to have a lot of hand in my opponent's turn anyways. What's the point of really perfect guarding? Let's just call this, draw, this perfect guard to an excel circle. Um, things like that. So, uh, having actual cards to fill up your board is a big part of this deck. Um, sometimes, like, I just don't have cards to, like, fill up my field. So, draw triggers help me do that. Um, they can be defensive if I damage them, which is really great. But, yeah. And uh, onto that similar topic, uh, I'm playing fronts instead of crits because... When this deck is aggressive early, um, if you're having a, a decent game going, you can push your opponent to high damage pretty fast. And once your opponent's at five, like fronts are just better. Um, but there's one big reason I'm playing fronts in this deck and not crits. Um, this deck already suffers from not being particularly strong. And like any Excel deck, every Excel deck suffer, suffers from the except maybe, like, I guess, Tachikaze, um, suffers from the issue of when your opponent damages a trigger, your turn kind of just stops. Um, and when you're playing this deck especially, you can't afford to just let your turn stop because your opponent damaged a trigger. So fronts are the best way to counter that weakness of uh, that Excel decks have, is that if you get a front trigger versus if you've gotten a crit trigger, um, fronts can sometimes just be more devastating than crits. Crits 
are like a little more sacky um, and they have that threat. Um, whereas fronts, they help you deal with like problems like your point damage checking. But your point damage is a trigger, but you hit a front, you're like, I don't care. Like at least I, it sucks, but at least I can still keep going. Uh, my trigger canceled out yours. My whole field is still big enough to hit. And when your opponent doesn't get it and you get a front, it just pushes harder. Now, um, they're not perfect. Uh, sometimes the situations aren't perfect for uh, you to just want to swing Vanguard first, but uh, usually they are. So um, I guess that's the general idea uh, behind it here. Um, if I didn't clarify it well enough, you want to ask me like what I'm trying to say more, like I didn't clarify it better, feel free to ask. But I think... The journal idea I'm saying that I got out. Uh, for the grade ones, we got or four Gareth. Um, he's not a bad card, but he's not a super great card either. But in terms of our options, he's one of the better. Um, when he's played by an effect, you can counter blast and give him plus ten, which is kind of cool. Um, he's just an eighteen, um, which works pr pretty okay in this deck. He's not a fantastic card, like, a lot of times when I have him in my hand, I'm like, ugh, this card's not that great. But he's not the worst either. Um, he's a pretty cool card. He has some cooler, like, the fact that he can just be called by Bowmans is, like, what makes him actually, like, I guess a good card. Other than that, he's just kind of meh. But as far as the options go, then we have um, Haugen, I think that's how you say his name. Uh, this guy is kind of cool. Um, if he's out there and your Vanguard's attack hits, you can uh, scry the top card and you can call it or you can just uh, leave it on the top, um, which is cool that you don't have to call it. Um, you can just leave it there. Um, like You can look at it, see that it's like a draw trigger and be like, I'm not calling that. I'm going to leave it there. And you know because you've seen it, you can just like no guard your opponent's first attack, hit that draw trigger, and just ride out the opponent's turn a little bit easier. Um, I wish this card had at least moved to soul if you used its skill instead of just retiring him. It's like as a this deck still blasts a lot, soul would help. Um, but yeah, and while I do like certain aspects of this card, um, he's also not that great either because it requires an attack to hit and it's specifically if the vanguard's attack hits so he's an okay like gareth he's an okay card but he's not that great either um and then our last good one playing for dindrain uh dindrain is like a conflicting thing going on in this deck with me this deck so as i've said before this deck is soul blast heavy and this card just another soul blast um, and when you're like trying to like build the deck to adjust for like soul blasting stuff, you're like I want to take it easier, but then you're like, when it comes to your grade one options, you're like, I could play like a 9k vanilla or I could play like this card that does something. Um, she's not, I feel like if they had fixed this deck soul blasting problem, she'd be a lot better card. And, um, there were more ways to actually like get her off. She seems like a good card on paper, but with the other cards around her, she's not so hot. Um, and yet she is still probably one of the better options. Um, I also do find kind of a problem with the idea of you could Soul Blast with her to choose to draw the card or Soul Charge and give her plus three. Um, it's weird. Like, do you really want to Soul Blast just to have a 10k? Uh, Soul Blast counter charge, so you get back the cost, uh, or not counter charge, Soul Charge. Um, yeah, I don't know how this card is weird. It seems good, but it's also not that good. They just seems like they had a lot of missed opportunities with this deck, but the way they designed it, <clears throat> uh, for the grade twos, for Bowman's. Um, he's a pretty good card. Uh, when you play him, you can just call it a Gareth from your deck, and then you can make that Gareth like an 18 using its own skill. 
when you play him, he's a 12k, so it's cool. Um, he's a good card. This thing, I don't have too many complaints about. Um, he was an okay design card. Um, and then there's Vivian for Vivian. Um, also, it seems like a pretty good card, uh, especially on paper. But like, as I've said before, this deck is having problems with its soul blasting. And she only works when she's played from the hand. I don't know why they would include that with this card. It's not like, like if you're lucky enough to call her off an effect, I feel like you should, you deserve to actually be able to get to use her. But they chose not to do that. Um, and yet, she's still probably worth playing because she lets you look at the top three and call one. So she's a plus one. You have to use a valuable resource, which is Soul Blast. Counter Blast isn't so much a problem. Um, can be, but usually it's not that bad. So, good card of the options amongst the better. And then for the last grade two, playing two of this guy. Um, Tornus, I think is Yeah, Tornus. Uh, at first, when I was playing around with this deck, getting to know it, uh, figuring out builds, uh, I really liked playing uh, Lapier, or I was playing Lapier, I shouldn't say liked. Lapier looks really good on paper. Like, that card looks like a really swell card. Uh, in my experience actually playing the deck, I'm like, this card is kind of unnecessary. Um, like, as I've said before when I was talking about, like, the draw triggers in this deck, you often, like don't have enough resources to like really make a proper field in the first place you're like yeah i can like call out this lapier shooter and in theory that would get me another attack but when you couldn't fill the field to begin with like was it really even like an additional is it really really even there at that point your heat lapier is just counter blast one to have plus five not even like an additional attack um, so I opted to play this guy. If you have one card in soul, he's a 12k. And if you have no cards in soul, which as I keep mentioning, it's like there's a lot of soul blasting. He's a 17. So, uh, I'm only playing two of them. Um, and it's been pretty cool so far. He's at least like a beat stick. Um, whereas before I wasn't really getting to like utilize, Lapier, where I felt like it was a quality manner. This guy's at least a beat stick, especially against decks that aren't force. He forces 10 shield all by himself, so. Uh, now for the grade threes. First, we have our four Ezel. Uh, again, this card uh, kind of looks good on paper, and isn't actually that great. Um, it's superior ride skill is so much like worse than what it was in uh, back in the day where you could superior ride using the starter. Um, like when you get it, you get it. It's worth doing, but it's really like kind of a meh. You're just basically, you're not, you're losing a drive check. So you're not getting to do a twin drive, which would really help this deck because this deck has, Lacking resources. I think they just like really were afraid this deck could be broken if they made it too strong too fast and they ended up just making this deck kind of meh. Um, so his superior ride skill is like worth doing, but it's not like fantastic. And a lot of games you don't even get to utilize that. And then he has his uh, on attack skill to call someone from hand, which sounds really cool actually. It sounds good. But then you find that he has the same problem that Lapier Shooter does. You're like, ah, oh, I can get additional attacks. But what is the point when you had to basically call your whole hand just to make a field anyways? Like, if to fill out your field, you had to use up like your hand and you don't have anything to call and create an additional attack anyways, like, what was the point in the first place? Um... So the irony of this card is, I feel like the second skill should be a better skill than the first. And even though the first skill, as I said, isn't that like great anyway, um, the reason I'm actually playing this card is because I can superior ride with it. 
Um, and then I don't plan to usually stay at him too long because it, once like I've superior road with him, this guy kind of becomes a vanilla because uh, his his skill that seems good of call a card when he attacks, you end up just not using it like a lot, you, probably more times than not. I actually don't even get to call something because it's not worth it or I don't have cards. Um, next. We've got, I'm playing four Pelinor. So this card seems like this card sh was supposed to be what could have saved this deck, uh, even though it's like a lower grade uh, or lower rarity. This card could have probably saved this deck a lot of its issues, but they overcosted it. The ability to superior write it from your hand is like really cool and like would be a really threatening like thing. And sometimes you even get to do it. But they way over it by giving it a Soul Blast of 3. And you have to get a rear guard to hit. And he loses one drive. Like It all would have been fine if they had just reduced his cost of the Soul Blast. Um, sometimes you get to do it, sometimes not. But the main reason like we're still playing him in this deck, as I just was talking about Ezel. Uh, Ezel kind of becomes a vanilla because you can't really keep resources to actually get the additional attack off. So it's actually better uh, to initially, after your initial start on your grade 3 on Ezel, if you could have superior right, go into this guy because at least you can utilize his uh, second skill. Uh, other than the fact I should also mention riding again to get more Excel circles. Um, uh, at the end of the battle that your rear guard attacked, you can counter blast and return it to your hand. So that's actually kind of cool. It allows you to do things like call your grade ones like Gareth to an Excel circle, uh, swing for 18, and then put that 10 shield back in your hand so you can use it to guard in your opponent's turn or just get the card out of harm's way from the opponent's turn where they could have re retired it or attacked it. Um, this card could have been, like, if this card had, like, was easy to actually superior ride, uh, it could have helped this deck a lot, but they overcosted it. It's still pretty playable. Um, it's got a, as I said, I like that second skill a lot. It's one of the few things about this deck that gives it slightly chance to play. Like, because I've talked about before in this deck, you kind of just have to go out there, throw your cards out there just to get, like, plays to happen. And so with him, at least when you're having to play that reckless way, you can use something to attack and get it back anyway. So you actually have something to guard with on the opponent's turn. But yeah. Uh, and then the last card of our deck. Uh, I'm playing three Sagramore. Now, this card is good. This is one of the few cards in this deck I can just say is just flat out good. Sagramore is good. But there is a downside. Uh, this guy is a Soul Blast, and I keep talking about this deck has problems with Soul Blast. Um, I want to play four of this card, but I'm not um, because of the Soul Blast issues. And, like, getting this deck to run, like, decently well, I'm already, like, with this build, running 11 grade 3s. Because um, I feel like it's giving me the best option to actually pull something off. Um, but yeah, this is a good card. I do like this card a lot, and it's ironic that a card I would say is one of the best cards in the deck, if not the best, I'm t only playing three of it, and that's because the deck was, uh, the cost of the way this deck was designed is just not good, it's just too much soul blasting, but, um, yeah, so, uh, that's basically it for the deck here, um, this video turned out longer than I wanted, uh, thought it would be, or wanted to, Probably because I had so much to like talk about um, in regards to playing it and its issues, but thank you for watching.